in this session we'll talk about reinforced concrete beam and as you see we have this reinforced concrete beam and shows the exaggerated deflection in a blue color and if this is where the maximum compression happens and, and here is the maximum tension happens so if we take a section like this one and this beam we can see the section looks like this where the maximum compression is at this area at the top and the tension is at the bottom and this is the reason why normally when the beam is loaded from the top down like so and this is the shape of bending exaggerated bending then the the tension area is where we put the reinforcement or rebars this is the rebars location at the bottom now it is important to understand that the reason why the, uh, the three bars are at the bottom is they will take the tension and concrete is a stone like material by itself it is uh, resistant to compression but it is weak in tension this is why we we use the these three bars to resist tension and this combination of concrete and uh, steel we need to find a group of equations or formulas which we'll use for the design and this is the section where we'll see the compression at the top and tension at the bottom and the stress distribution for compression area looks like this and of course the tension area is only with three bars so it's a straight <coughs> straight line now to simplify the stress of this stress it had been approximated to a block like this one and this block has a depth of a this depth is called a lowercase a and the other rule that we use in the in the design is when we design any um, structural element we try always not to utilize the entire strength or stress capacity of the material so this is why we have the this 0 0.85 FC prime FC prime is the maximum allowable concrete stress so we don't want to stress the concrete to the maximum so we as a factor of safety we go up to 85 percent of it that is the meaning of 0 0.85 FC prime I'm saying the same thing goes for steel this is yield stress of a steel and this is something that we did in the strength of materials meaning that we do not go to the breaking stress of the steel we go to a bit less than the breaking stress which is called the yield stress and while we are on this AS is the area of steel the cross-sectional area of steel which is here at the bottom of the section now from this stress diagram we would like to to derive equations so before we continue with the de derivatives you see this is a compression part this is a compression area and this tension area and as we learned from static as far as this beam is not moving anywhere this is a static case of a static meaning this compression must be equal to this tension to keep to be in place that is the meaning and uh, we have this was compression stress and this was compression ten tension stress we are talking about stress now and if you remember from previous teaching the definition of stress is equal to force divided by cross-sectional area which means if you would like to get the force force means stress multiplied by cross-sectional area so just keep that in mind as we go through our derivatives now so let's start with with the with the compression stress the compression stress of concrete is equal to the stress so the compression 
stress of concrete is equal to a 0 0.85 FC prime that's the compression stress multiplied by the area now the area of the block is composed of A and the width B this is the width B so we need to multiply it by the area so it means A lowercase multiplied by B that is the area part of it so this is the compression stress and for tension stress is equal to the again the steel stress which is called Fy this one and the cross-sectional area of the steel is area of steel AS multiplied by areas now if you would like to equate these two I'd like to make the compression equal to tension which is the case here for equilibrium here so I will I will replace them with the equation so meaning that 0 0.85 FC prime AB is equal to area of steel multiplied by Fy so we would like to drive the first equation which is will isolate A which is this one here A is equal to area of steel multiplied by Fy divide by 0 0.85 FC prime B this is the first equation now the other equation is that as, as you can see in this beam there is load applied here in this direction which is causing it to bend so this is bending so whatever load is applied here must be resisted by bending moment here so this B must have a resisting bending moment and the resisting bending moment here is equal to of course this is now compression force this is compression force and this is tension force as you know from previous uh, course from strength of materials we have the bending moment or from static is bend the bending moment is force multiplied by is force multiplied by distance so the resisting moment is equal to either the compression force this one multiplied by this distance or the tension force multiplied by this distance and this distance actually if you look at the this is A and the distance from the top of the compression to the center of the reinforcement is called D so the distance is called is D minus A by 2 if you look at closely to the diagram you will understand that so meaning that if I would like to calculate the resisting moment which I will call MR is equal to the tension force multiplied by D minus A by 2 which means the tension is tension force is area of steel FY and multiplied by D minus A by 2 so meaning MR but now we have in the American building American concrete Institute there's a factor of safety so instead of saying this is the capacity assuming the capacity just uh, is equal to 100 kip foot we'll say just for the sake of uh, safety we'll say it is not 100 it is 90 so we reduce it by 10 percent that will be always the case so this becomes 0 0.9 I'll say multiplied by area of steel Fy d minus a by 2 that is equation number 2 now there is a balance for the 
reinforcement used in the concrete. So uh, the concept in the design is that we would like to make sure that we will not have uh, the amount of steel to be too much or too little. There are rules in the design. There is a concept is called we would like to make sure that the in case of a failure that this beam will fail and slowly so that people will have a chance to get out of the building and this happens with ductile material so meaning that if you look at the steel see one fear fails and sagging it will keep on sagging it will show signs of, of failure before it completely collapses but in the case of concrete which is a brittle material it doesn't show any a gradual form of failure it crashes and that is dangerous so that's why there's a balance we have to make sure that in the case when we design the concrete beam it should fail in, in ducta and steel before it fails in concrete and when it fails in steel or it is ductile of course then it will start to show sagging signs in the beam before it collapses so this is called uh, uh, below the balance and if we if we take a look at the assume this is the maximum and this is minimum so the steel ratio there's something called steel ratio this is maximum steel ratio and this is max minimum steel ratio so we want to make sure that the steel ratio is something in, in between because anything below the minimum steel ratio it will have no effect on the beam it has no influence and anything above the maximum will 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 make this concrete beam over reinforced meaning that the concrete will fail before the steel and that is dangerous and is not acceptable so according to the code there are limits for this uh, steel ratio and of course the steel ratio is is called rho this is a greek symbol it is the area of steel divided by b divided by a. so this is the another equation but this, it doesn't need any derivative so this is equation number one and this is equation number two and this is equation number three now the steel ratio is, like we said, is equal to the area of steel divided by V and D. And this is limited according to the code. And if you take a look at the code, uh, we'll see there's the minimum and maximum for the according to these tables, if you look at these tables, you'll be given these tables also. So here is the the limits for here it reads the maximum the maximum steel ratio and this is based on the say if we have the concrete strength is four thousand and the steel strength is sixty thousand then in that case the the ratio is this 0 0.0207 that is for the maximum if you do the want to know the minimum this is this table for minimum so 4, 000, 4, 4 000 concrete and 60 steel this is the minimum value 0 0.0033 so these are the limits that you should abide so this represents if you will if we have the if we say this is the maximum and this is the minimum so steel ratio maximum and steel ratio minimum if you have your concrete 4000 psi and steel 60000 psi this will be 0 0.0207 and 0 0.0033 so your steel ratio should be something in between that is the meaning and you can find it from this table like I said you'll be given this table when you design so just to make that now the other issue that we have is the cover here so if you look at here if I enlarge this part 
See, the, according to the building code, again, the American Concrete Institute code, it says the clear, which is the clear, concrete cover is one half inch for beams, and that is in the, in the code here. You can see this is where it says, it says one, one and a half inch for beams. So we need to have, that is, an, and again, this is an American Concrete Institute, ACI. So if we look at here, this is one and a half inch, and then to calculate the normally the, the calculation for for the effective depth is taken from the middle of the rebars. So we need to have this D starts from here. Nope. So this is the distance that we will suggest to be always 2.5 inches if we are doing one layer of, of rebars. If we have only one layer of rebars, then it is 2.5 inch according to our calculation. So just keep that in mind. And the reason for that, like I said, we use the, the, the American Concrete Institute code because it is not up to us to make any decision. These are standards. So with this standard, we will Now, having said so, now this is equation number three. Now we will have another equation which is uh, tables based. You don't need to do too much calculation with that one. That is the MU. MU stands for ultimate resist, uh, ultimate moment or resisting moment. So we'll be using the resisting moment MR, and we'll be using MU ultimate uh, interchangeably. So they are same, same thing. So MU is equal to RU b d square that's another equation there is no derivative for this so this is equation number four and if you will look at we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll list all the equations here and make a relationship between them so we'll have the first equation is i'll make it in black black is equal to area of steel fy divided by 0 0.85 fc prime b that's equation number one equation number two is mu is equal to 0 0.9 area of steel fy d minus a by two and then we have the steel ratio equal to area of steel divided by B and D. And then we have the fourth one which is says MU is equal to RU BD square. Now we'll, we'll just add, these are the four equations, but if you are given a chance to decide what the B is equal to, if you are given the chance to do B and D, both of them, then the best combination for them is when, when B is, is equal half of D. So just in case, because you are, when you design, you decide what the B and D are. So we can write an extra equation here in case if you are given the chance to do. and. MU equal to RU, B is equal half of D, multiplied by D square. So this makes MU equal to RU DQ divided by two. So we can add this just if the if you are given the right to do so. Because sometimes you are not there, you might be given certain criteria in which you will not make a decision about D or B. But if you are given the chance to decide B and D, you can have this combination, and this will help you get MU equal to RU D cube divided by 2. Now, the other fact that you need to keep in mind once you know the value of steel ratio in the design, then you should be able to know the value of RU. How come the tables? We have tables in which uh, we, uh, there is a list for all 
and these tables will be our design tables here. Look at this table. Uh, you see the value of steel ratio here and the steel value of RU. So if you know the value of RU, then you know the value of steel ratio and so on and so on. And of course, you have to keep in mind this is for a combination of now, this is for 3000 concrete PSI and the steel 40,000 and so on and so forth. So if you are looking for, uh, um, for our, in our case, was for 3000. Uh, concrete and 60,000 steel then we have to go to a table of this is 4040 this is 5000 this is 3000 concrete and 60 steel so you can choose from this one if you are if you know value of steel ratio you can get the value of R U and so on and so forth so just to clarify as why well, I have these stars in here. Um, so once we have all of these equations, we'll do a couple of examples of design.